Hi, Kelly Clement here from Metastock. In this video, we'll be talking about the Explorer function in Metastock. The Explorer is the quickest, easiest way for you to identify trading opportunities across a universe of stocks. So I'll be walking you through the Explorer, how to use its different functions. So let's take that and go ahead and go into Metastock. So when you first open up Metastock, what you're going to come across is the Power Console. The first tab is the Chart tab, and the second one is what we're going to be covering here, the one that's called Explore. So again, what the Explorer allows us to do is take a strategy, put it against a list of stocks, and have it give, give us a list of current opportunities based off of that strategy that you've chosen. What we're going to do is go through a few different scenarios and things that you can do to identify opportunities and how to most effectively use the Explorer. So what you're going to find here at the top when you first log into it is a list of all explorations. So if I scroll down through here, you can see there's quite a number of different strategies that are built in. So you can choose one or you can choose multiple and we're going to do multiple scenarios for you. So let's just go ahead and start with one. What I'm going to do is look at this Equus MACD buy signal. So what this is going to do, it's going to look through whatever list of stocks I choose and it'll give me, stocks that are giving me buy and sell signals today based off of the MACD. So let's uh, choose the MACD, we'll scroll down here and let's have it look through the S&P 100. Now over here you have some options and there's different options that you can choose on particularly how you want to explore something. You can have it load minimum records, which is basically the, the formula in Metastock will look at the data and see how much it needs to load, or you can have it load a certain amount. Typically, what I like to do is, a, is load in at least 500 periods so it can scan through a wide breadth of data just to make sure it's getting all the most current information. Check this use current exchange date time. That's making sure that it's scanning the most up-to-date data that you have. But if you want to go back and scan on a certain date, so let's say I wanted to scan what was happening a week ago, I could set that date uh, back to say 412, and then it would scan on that day for me. So here we're, we're scanning a current example, so we'll go ahead and choose that. Now, if you're, depending on which version of Metastock you're using, you can choose the time frame you want to scan. If you're running Metastock DC, which is our end of day, you could do daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, yearly, or custom. So if you wanted to do a two bar or a three day bar or something like that, you could. Here I have Metastock RT, which allows me to scan one minute, five minute, 30 minute. I can also daily, weekly, whatever. And then I can also set custom. So if I wanted to do a 22 minute bar or an 88 minute bar, you could do that as well. For our example here, we're just going to stick with daily. And this option to use filter, what that is, is in a lot of the explorations inside Metastock, you can set a precursor. So something has to be true in order for the rest of it to happen. So if, say for example, it has to be above a certain number of volume before it, gives a, before it looks to see if it has a buy signal. If it doesn't have a certain number of volume, it will exclude it out even though it may have a buy signal. So you can choose to turn that filter on or off. Typically I like to use the filter, so I'll just leave it checked. The multiple exploration options, we're gonna come back to that in just a moment. I want to focus in on a, a first scan and then we'll do some multiple explorations to show that to you. So now down here we have this summary option and this will recap basically what I'm doing. You don't have to choose summary before starting your exploration but it's a good idea to just take a look at what's happening. So I've selected to load 500 records using the ex current exchange date time. I'm using daily and then default, so you can, in Metastock RT, you can set to scan on different criteria, for example, like volume weighted average price or bid or ask. We're just going to stick with the default, which is basically last price. So that, we'll go ahead and use that. Then I'm doing the Equus MACD, and here's the list of stocks that I'm going to scan. Let's go ahead and start our exploration. And what it does is it brings up this box that gives us an overview of what's happening. So it's going through my list of instruments. An instrument says basically stocks. It's kind of a synonymous term. 
So we'll see here our exploration status, our, our instrument status. And here's what I ran. I ran the MACD. Here's the time I ran it. Was my filter enabled? Yes. Daily, how much data I loaded. I had zero results and 102 rejects. So I can see that down here. If I had had any stocks that were giving me a buy opportunity, they would be listed here. I can come over to rejects and see all the stocks that were rejected and why they were rejected. So normal filter rejection means nothing met my criteria. There were no buy opportunities. So let's maybe try a different scan to see if we can see some results. So instead here, what I'm going to do is actually look for candlestick bearish patterns. So this scan, and typically when you hover over something, it's going to give you an overview of what it's going to be looking for. So this scan identifies candlestick bearish patterns. Once they're identified, you can put on the Equus Candlestick Expert. Here's the patterns it's looking for. So it's got hanging man, long upper shadow, shooting stars, big black candle. So you can see what it's going to be looking for before you start your exploration. So let's go ahead and try this exploration and see what kind of results we get with this one. Okay, so this time you can see I have 82 results with 20 rejects. So again, I could look at rejects and see normal filter rejection. And I can come over here now and see, okay, I have my instrument name, close, so the closing price of where, what it scanned. And then I can see my different patterns here. So for example, if I wanted to see if there was a hanging man, I could double click this to see if there are ha any hanging men. There's not. We could rank by any of these. So now we have a long upper shadow. So I can see Charter Communications here had a long upper shadow. So when you see a result, it's designated by this one. If there's not a result, it's designated by a zero, uh, letting you know if, whether it's true or false. Okay, so I can also see this one. So Charter here has a long upper shadow, a shooting star, and a black body. So it has all three of those patterns identified at once. So from here, I can, since I have it highlighted, I could choose open chart to look at the chart, or I could just double click right here in the exploration window, and I can see that I have my candlesticks, but my candlestick expert attached back here. Now that's covered in a different video. We won't be covering that here, but if I wanted to see these in candlesticks, I can just change this to candlesticks, and now you can see that candlestick, and you can see those candle patterns forming back here. So the Explorer window is designed to actually let you work with your charts as you're, as you're moving around. So if I want to go to the next chart, I could just double click on it and go through and look at that list, so on and so forth. So I could just click through this list. If you have multiple monitors, you could put this on a separate monitor and click through your list and move through it. In here, there's some other things that you can do. You can do what's called inspect, where that allows you to view basically the open all the patterns going back and see if there are any historically on past days you could print your results you could save this list so if I were to choose save list I could save this to a custom list so I could go back and view it in the charting tab we're not going to cover that here that's covered in, in another video later on but that's how you can just save a list you can also just save multiples from here from by selecting them holding down the shift button right clicking and saying save to file or add to custom list. So let's go ahead and exit out here and let's go through some other scenarios that you can do with the Explorer. So let's close all these and go back into the Power Console. So we've covered doing a single exploration. Let's talk about doing multiple explorations. So multiple exploration would be, well, let's say I wanted to run all these candle pattern scans all at the same time. So I can select them all. I'm going to do them against the same list, but I have some options now over here under multiple exploration options. I can either use the results from the preceding exploration, or I can use the selected instruments for all explorations, or I can use each exploration's previously selected instruments. So what I'm going to cover are these first two here. So what we're going to do is use the selected instruments for all explorations. So what that means is, it's going to run each one of these scans individually against the S&P 100. So if I choose summary, you can see I have all of these selected. I have all my 100 lists, 100 stocks, excuse me, and we'll go ahead and start exploration. Now, as these go through, 
we'll let the first one complete. You can see that this, this first one is running, the other ones are waiting, that's designated by the clock, and when it's done, you'll see this check mark. And as soon as it's done, I can start working with that list. I don't have to wait for all the others to complete. I can just go ahead and jump in and start. Here you can see that we have, again, those same results. And it's work just like working with that single exploration. But now I can click through and I can manage multiple all at the same time without having to go back and look at each one individually. So very easy workflow for identifying opportunities here with running multiple scans at the same time. So that's one example of what we can do with the Explorer. Another example of what we can do, so let's, let's actually select a different set. If, I, if you had sets, if you had some selected and you wanted to remove all of them at the same time, just come up here to the top. You can see you have, I have three explorations checked. I'm just going to uncheck that and that will remove all of them. So in this example here, what I'll do is I'll choose the RMO. Now the RMO is another strategy in Metastock. You can watch videos on the RMO, but this is just an example of what we can do with scanning. I'm going to choose the RMO bullish zone, a new blue bar, which is a criteria for it, and a buy arrow. So this is looking for three sets of criteria to identify a trade. Now you could do the same thing with MACD, you can do the same thing with RSI, with volume. You can, multi you can tier explorations to help you find things easier. So this time what I'm going to do is use the results from the preceding exploration. Now what I'll do is choose summary. And now my order here matters a little bit. So you can set what you want to happen first. So for example, I want RMO bullish zone first. So that one's already selected first. And then let's say I wanted swing tray buy arrow to be second, and then new blue bar. You can rank these and move them around by choosing these arrows and setting your order. So in my case here, the RMO bullish zone has to be true first, and then the new blue bar has to be true, and then swing trade buy arrow. So to look through each, th each one of those as a precedent. So let's go ahead and start our exploration and you'll see how this kind of helps us filter down and get an even more powerful buy signal by incorporating multiple strategies together. So again, we did that same S&P 100 list. So you can see here, I had 68 results on the first scan. The next scan rejected out 66 of those 68 and left me with two. The next scan, filtered out one of those two and left me with one result. So Morgan Stanley here in this example met all three of my criteria in that order of setup. So you can see kind of how it will go through and I can look at each one that was rejected in each list. So here I can see Abbott Labs had the new blue bar, but the swing trade buy arrow had all three criteria. So it's a great way to narrow down, but still be able to go back to the other lists and see what's going on. Let's go ahead and choose exit here. Now, let's say that you've done a lot of explorations. You kind of want to go back and look at what's happened in, in an exploration that you've run. So you have some options with that. If I, let's say I wanted to see all the stocks that were in that RMO bullish zone, I can right click on that choose report and it will show me just that report okay so this you can see that was the one that I had 68 results with 34 rejects but what happens if I want to see all the reports that I've run if I want to go through and view them all well there's an option up here at the top where we can just right click and you have this option for view all reports so I'll just choose that and this will show me all the scans that I've run and they're with their most recent report. So you can see these are all the scans we've talked about so far in this presentation that we've run. And you can see the, the rejects, the results, how many periods I loaded. If I'd run a different time frame, say a 30 minute, that would show here. So whatever time frame it ran. So all that information is available to me. If I want to know more about an exploration and what it was scanning, I can come over here and choose view details. And this will give me that same overview as to what I saw earlier, um, letting me know what it's scanning for. And then down here, you have the filter. So this filter is saying it's, it has to be true in some of these columns for it to display a result. 
And then in here, I can choose what the formula is and see how the formula was written. Now, some formulas are going to be locked. You're not going to be able to see them all. Some are open, and if they're open, you'll be able to see them here. If they're locked, it'll say password protected. So let's go ahead and choose cancel here. Now, that gives you an idea of how we can go through and we can scan on single lists, multiple explorations, and different ways of doing that. There's one more thing I'm going to show you before we wrap up, and that's how to make set up favorite explorations. So as you're going through and you're exploring Metastock, you may find that there's certain scans that you like, certain scans you don't like. So what we have up here at the top is this favorites option. So let's say I wanted to add in these candlestick patterns. Well, what I can do is just right click on it and say add to favorites. And you see it's now in the favorites, but it also remains down here at the bottom. So it's in both places. Let's just add in a few of these to favorites. We'll add in the doji patterns as well. And so now you can see I have the three favorite scans. So that way you don't have to scan through this big list of explorations to find the ones that you want every day. They're just right here at the top. Now another great feature is if you want to see reports of favorites, you can also do that by right clicking and looking at view all favorite reports. And that will let you just view the reports from your favorites as part of that. So it makes it easy to just look at your favorites versus all and kind of bounce back and forth between your lists. So you can see that the Explorer is a very powerful tool. It can really quickly help you zoom in and identify opportunities based off of the strategy that you choose. I hope that you found this video instructful and useful and you can apply it to your trading. And I do wish you successful trading and have a good day.